Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what are we doing here? You guys need an opening statement? Yeah, make an opening yeah, statement. Yeah, make an opening. <laughs> We're excited to be in the Lincoln, Nebraska regional and uh, fired up to play at 1 o'clock tomorrow. There's only one thing I have to say today is, is I'm surprised the governor hasn't canceled everything tomorrow so everybody can watch this match. Uh, since the NCAA puts us at 1 o'clock, assuming that we know Nebraska will sell out and our fans better be ready to blow off the roof tomorrow night. <laughs> That's all I got. Afternoon. Huh? Tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, yeah. We have 1 o'clock. We can blow the roof off this place. <laughs> I don't want any excuses. They haven't had time to fire up. The students will be out there probably at 6 in the morning waiting. Thursday match, you, what was your reaction when you saw No that? comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alexi Merritt, how do you like playing in the afternoon? You've had a couple Sunday matches where you play during that. How do you adjust your practice, your kind of routine to get ready for those earlier matches? I think today, obviously, we practiced early too, so it kind of helps to have the day before prepare us a little bit. Um, it's obviously a little different of a feel, but at the end of the day, we're just playing volleyball, so we just kind of have to keep that mindset and not let those outside distractions affect our game and how we get ready for the game. I believe there was one year, Penn State, did we play at 9 in the morning? <laughs> yeah, 9 in the morning. So I don't know, you guys, you got to figure that out. You guys do some investigative reporting and figure out why Nebraska is always going early. Do you think that means the NCAA takes advantage that Nebraska will draw a huge audience whenever? No, no comment. No comment. <laughs> He's not mad about it, clearly. I saw the time, like, I immediately was like, I wonder what you're thinking, so. <laughs> hey, we're just happy to be playing. <laughs> How would you fix it? Uh, do what basketball does, spread it over two days. It should be no-brainer why not so <clears throat> but it t you know it took me 20 years of complaining about you know why are regionals back-to-back -back nights and what we used to do and I remember my first year at Wisconsin we got to a regional regionals and we were actually hosting it I think it was in 95 and we played Notre Dame we didn't start because everything went late, so we didn't start till nine o'clock at night. The match finished past midnight, and we had to play Florida at one o'clock the next day. And you tell me that's that's good judgment by the NCAA. So now at least we've been fighting, and uh, to get a day in between because these athletes are, you know, they're they're maxing it out and they need recovery time, and that's the problem when you go back to back regionals, which I think was last year, the first year we did this where there was a day in between. I mean, you've got people going late and then they get the early match and it's, they don't even get enough time to recover. So, uh, so we made a baby step. Let's take another step. This is also a time of year, though, where you're not just balancing the NCAA tournament. You still have classes. So does that extra day, that space, allow you to also be able to balance a lot of these things a little bit more effectively that you wouldn't have been if they were always back to back. You kind of have a little more time, space to spread things out. Yeah, I think so for sure. And I think the later the season goes, like the more stressful it can get. So I think just having that extra day to get, whether it's recovery, school, um, seeing your family, whatever it is, like that extra day kind of helps you manage all that stuff. Lexi, after getting knocked out in this round last year, do you still kind of remember that feeling? And is there any, you know, extra motivation from that? Oh, yeah. I know we've talked as a team, and, I mean, a lot of the team is new and wasn't here last year, but just from some of the returners from last year and just how we weren't satisfied at all with how that season ended, and this is a whole new team, a very competitive group of girls, and I think we're all just ready to get out there and just keep taking it game by day, game by game. And I know that Becca's fired up and ready to <laughs> make it a lot farther this year. So, John, when you when you start looking at Georgia Tech, their schedule or on film, what gets your attention? Georgia Tech. 
Well, they, they, they run a lot of different lineups, so I don't know if that's part of their design or they don't know who to, to who they want to play, but they can get 6-2, 5-1, and that's kind of Brazilian style. They're Brazilian coaches. They have, what, four or five Brazilian players on their team, a uh, the girl from Argentina. Uh, so uh, that's one thing. They're very good volleyball players. They're, you can tell their experience. They've got all the shots, um, and, uh, you know, they've played a really tough schedule. They uh, They've competed really well, and um, this is a it's a great, great uh, regional semi matchup. I, I think all the all the matchups this year. I, I I'm not sure there's ever been a year where I thought, man, there is going to be great matches all day long tomorrow. And uh, you know they're all going to be super competitive. Is that a result of the level of play? Yes. Here? Yeah. And I I remember I can remember ten years ago our third round match was. Yeah, we might be playing somebody okay, but I mean, these are all great matches. All these teams are, you know, all these teams have a really good shot of being in the Final Four. Mira, where are you guys at in terms of balancing the excitement of this weekend and yet some of the nervousness? And how is this weekend any different than it was for this team last weekend? I think we're, like Lexi said, just taking it day by day and. We always like to remind ourselves and each other that we're just playing volleyball. Like we just had another practice like we did at the beginning of August. And so I think for us as a team, it's just making sure that we remain level headed in that aspect and just treating it as another game. And obviously we're really, really excited, but I think it's also good to remind ourselves that we play volleyball for however many hours that day and we do it every single day. So it's nothing different than what we did yesterday or what we did last weekend or three months ago. Um, I mean, I've played a lot of matches here, and I feel like no matter what time of day, it, what time of day it is, what time of the year it is, um, it's always packed, it's always loud, and they're always just ready to cheer us on and support us. So, I mean, I know Husker Nation will show up, and they'll be, they'll bring it. So, I'm excited to see that. I, th I think another thing to add to that is, you know, we haven't hosted a regional for six years now. So this is a new experience for our fans, which we haven't done in a while, and so they, they, they ought to be pretty fired up. This is, this is a big deal. Is it nice to not have to travel yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Just how much did that like, make things just that much easier for you? Well, the, the, the key is, you know, what do you have to do the, la the Thanksgiving week? If you're, if you're home, then this travel's okay because you haven't traveled maybe in two, two, and two or three weeks. If you're on the road that last Thanksgiving and then you got to turn around and travel right away, I mean, it's been a quick, you know, you would have had to leave. It's a pretty quick turnaround. So uh, I, I just, I think it's a huge advantage and it's a great reward if you can be a top four seed. We're, it's one, always one of our goals is to be a top four seed, but it's, it's hard to do. Any other questions? making some adjustments like getting the middles going and just doing some different things this week as you prepare for this next set of games? Well, I journal after every practice, so I could share that journal with you, but I'd be curious what these guys yeah. think. <laughs> I think each week we come into practice and the coaches have high expectations for us always, but there's always little slight changes for whatever we need to work on that week. And I think this entire season, but specifically this last week, we've done a really good job of whatever was asked of us, we're going to do our best to do. So I think, I mean, you specifically asked about the middles getting going and getting them involved. And I think they've been working really hard, especially with Bergen and kind of getting that connection down. But I mean, I think we do a good job every week of whatever <laughs> coach and them ask of us, but I think the middles have been working really hard on that specifically, and they've done a really good job of that, and I think you can see that in their play the last few weeks. Merrick, how do you feel like some of the younger players kind of handle their first tournament matches? Yeah, I think, I think they're doing a great job. It's really hard, and it's hard to manage it all during finals and things like that, but I think they're 
carrying themselves so gracefully and they're doing a great job and I know that I'm super proud of them but I think they also what makes them so special is they do a really good job of just remembering that they play volleyball all the time and just treating it like another match and I think they do a great job of that and that's why they're able to handle it so well but I think they've done a really good job. John you said all year long just about the gym your practices are always at such a high level have you seen it like gradually grow throughout the year? Or are you guys just kind of at the same place, humming right along? Like, you know, how do you evaluate, I guess, the growth of this team and where you guys are at right now with uh, two weeks left in the season? Yeah, we're a much better team than we were three months ago. We're a much better team than we were a month ago. Uh, our level has gone up uh, in pretty much every skill. Uh, this team loves to train. They're, they have ne they, I never have a problem motivating them in practice, never, this whole year. Uh, they love to train and they love to get in there and um, so and then what we try to do is we go in late in the season is we keep up in the ante. We got to make it a little harder. They got to get one more in a row to get out of that drill and just try to keep raising the level and these guys, they love it. Mary, is there any difference when you're playing against a team that runs a 6-2? I mean, are you doing anything different attacking wise? Do you see any different looks off of the net? Um, I would say obviously it's different from a blocking standpoint just because you're not in the 5-1 rotations, but I think for the most part, I mean, it gives us a little bit of an advantage if we need to recycle and things like that. That's what we've worked on. There's always a setter in the back row that we can go to and put them out of system, but I think for the most part, there's slight difference defensively just because there's six attackers in the front row compared to five normally, but for the most part, I mean... It's volleyball, you know? <laughs> it's gonna happen, and we've played Wisconsin runs a 6-2, like we've played teams that run 6-2s this year, so. Just another just another game, they just happen to run a 6-2. John, how is Lindsay coming along? She was in practice today. She's getting better every day. Is she closer to playing? I'll tell her you asked. <laughs> she's getting close, but she's gotta turn it loose in practice for a whole practice yet. Yeah, we're not there, we haven't, we've gone through most of practice. Like she did everything today, so, but uh, still, still ways away. Lexi, why do you think the coach hasn't had to motivate this team during practice, be ready for practice and have good practices? Um, I think everyone just has such a passion for getting better and for, I think everyone's really bought into this team and the goals that we set at the beginning of the year and we knew that it was going to be a long season and that we were going to have to get after it every day, but Every single person, all 14 of us, and the entire coaching staff was bought into getting a little bit better each and every day. And, I mean, it's a huge props to all the coaches because it's hard to ask so much of a team at the end of the season, but they're constantly asking us to just get a little bit better at what we're doing. And I think that says a lot about our staff and just this team and where we want to go. larger or did you guys just kind of learn how to deal with that pressure during the season being towards the top of the league and the top of the country? I feel like we've been learning all year long and just trying to keep those outside factors outside and just worrying about our side of the net and that's been something we've prioritized is just focusing on how we can play our type of volleyball and not worry about what seed we are, who we're playing, any of that because at the end of the day it just comes down to how we play. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm very happy. I'm not the most vocal all the time. So, I mean, I really had to step outside my comfort zone. But, I mean, I love just having her on the court, whether she has a voice or not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. You.